There's a problem of surplus women. There are 4 million more British women in your country than men. If every man in England got and um, Scotland and Wales, they all got married, there still be 4 million women who can't get husbands. Now I said, look, Islam has a solution to your problem. You don't like it, you laugh at us. I said, the laugh is on you. This is the solution to the problem Islam offers you. America has 7.8 million women, more than men. If every man in America got married, 7.8 million women can't get husbands. And of the manpower they have, 25 million are gays, sodomites. That makes 32 million women can't get husbands. Then 98% of the prison population is men. Still so many men out of circulation. You see, your problem is getting compounded. So he says, now look, Islam as a, as a natural religion, Allah bari ta'ala, God Almighty in His mercy, He gives you a solution. The solution is, Allah says, marry women of your choice by twos and threes and fours, but if you cannot do justice between them, marry only one. The only religion, book on the face of the earth, which has the statement, marry only one, is the Quran. There is no such statement in the Holy Bible, in the Bhagavad Gita or the Ramayana, nowhere. Marry only one. This is a solution to your problem. You have a laugh on us? I said, the laugh is on you. So, these are just words, the technicalities, the finest point. This is the solution, the medicine. If it is good enough for you, take it. If you don't, you simmer in your soup. Next question, please. My question is concerning your statement that there is no difference between Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. The question is this. As you know, in Judaism, Moses, in the Torah, when he brought a sacrifice offering before God, always a blood sacrifice, always a lamb. You know the story of Abraham. Then Jesus pointed out that uh, also said, by the blood, there is only forgiveness. Uh, my question is, where is blood in Islam? Do Muslims believe that the blood atones, or do they believe, as I have read so many times in the Quran myself, that they believe in works? Thank you. We get the question. I'll just summarize it in the interest of brevity. The concept of blood in the Muslim society as opposed to good works and good deeds. Where is the concept of blood in Islam? You see the idea of blood. The Jews had two goats for your sins. One the scapegoat and one for sacrifice. One, they loaded the sin on the goat and left it in the wilderness to take away your sins and the other for the expiation for your sins slaughter. And this carried on till Jesus and still the thing is the Christian continues. Though he doesn't sacrifice a sheep or a goat, he feels that Christ has fulfilled that. Right. But now the parable that Jesus gives, he doesn't say that. See that you sacrifice an animal and he takes away your sins. He didn't say that in the parable. If you remember the parable of the prodigal son, Jesus spoke about the prodigal son, that a father had two sons. One of them chose at one stage, he said, look daddy, give me what belongs to me, my inheritance, and I want to fend for myself. So the father gives him whatever ought to belong to this son, prodigal we call him now. So he goes out to a far off country, he squanders his wealth, whatever was given to him, and he falls into bad company, in the gutter, drinking, adultery, whatever, filth and dirt. And in that condition, he realizes that he would have been better off with the father. So he returns back to the father. And the father sees him from afar. You should know the Bible. He sees him from a distance and he runs towards the son and he embraces his son and he cries. He said, this my son was dead, is now alive. He was lost, is now found. And he tells the other brother, he said, sacrifice the fatted calf as a celebration of the incoming of the, of the prodigal. Now who is the father and who are the sons? In the parable, the father is God. Ask any Christian learned man, who is he talking about? Father is God. The sons are one like you, one like me. In other words, you are a good guy, always prayerful and all that. 
the other guy has drifted off and he chooses to come back. What does the father say? He doesn't say, you who you scold at my word, I want you to sleep with the pigs and look after my, my pigs for seven years before I get you into the house. Father doesn't do that. The father is prepared to sacrifice his own, not the son. The punishment should go to the son. So this is the law of God that if you make a sincere repentance, you repent sincerely, you want to come back to God, God accepts you with open arms. He will not punish you. He needs no blood. Not the blood of a man or a, of a lamb. In the house of Islam, the Quran tells us that neither the flesh nor the blood of the sacrificed animal reaches him. But it is your piety. What goes in to making the sacrifice? Yo. So if I understand, you say works is what the Muslim No, no, what? No, works also. Without spirit is a dead thing. You do the works, let's say you pray 50 times a day, you have more, uh, your, uh, your mind and soul is not there, you're wasting your time, you fast. In the house of Islam, when you fast, we don't eat and we don't drink from certain time to certain time. But at the same time, the guy is backbiting, he's slandering, so the Holy Prophet Muhammad says, you're wasting, you're only starving yourself. But isn't that a major difference? Isn't that a major difference? Oh yes, big difference. What are you doing? In other words, now your heart and mind and soul must be in what you're doing. Without that, just formality won't take you to heaven. Formality of sacrificing sheep, goat or cow, that doesn't take anybody to heaven. Because the Quran says, neither the blood nor the flesh of the sacrificed animal reaches him, but it is your piety, what is in you. The brother says Jesus did not use force to promote his religion, did Muhammad use force to promote his religion? Force. The sword, not force, I clarify the sword, to get people into the fold of his religion. <laughs>